friends. I have missed you. My most recent videos have been more niche or less vlog-like and I've missed just having casual talks with you guys and also being able to film my day-to-day -day and have people that care about watching it is such a gift. You guys bring so much magic to even the most mundane of Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays and all of the days. So thank you so very much for being here. I've had a very cozy morning, so I've started this new thing. So I am really good about journaling on a regular basis and just writing in general. However, I do try and don't always succeed to keep a gratitude journal and I don't know why it is but it seems like whenever I'm making the most progress like I'm on top of it writing my gratitude list every single day like just when it's about to become a habit I always fall through and so I was thinking 
how could I possibly make this a part of my everyday routine without it feeling like a chore? Because gratitude is so essential in any self-help book you read about improving your life or living your dream life, all of them emphasize the importance of gratitude. And so I was trying to come up with a foolproof way to incorporate gratitude into my daily routine. And thinking about that led me to my morning coffee or tea. I have coffee or tea every single morning. And I thought if I could just incorporate my gratitude list with my morning coffee and tea ritual, then I'd do it every single day. And I have, it's been absolutely wonderful. So when I put the kettle on to boil water, instead of just turning it on high and having it boil as quickly as possible, I put it on medium high. And then I write down 10 things that I'm grateful for during the time it takes the water to boil. And then when the water is boiled and I've made my tea or coffee, I just sit and enjoy it. I take a deep breath, I look out the kitchen window, and it's become a really, really wonderful morning ritual. The best way to start these cold, dark winter mornings. <laughs> Monsieur is clearly very interested in what I have to say about this whole gratitude business. So yes, if like me, you have tried desperately to be a good person and practice gratitude each and every single day, I so highly recommend fitting it in with your morning coffee or tea. It's very approachable that way and takes such a little small amount of time and then also just sets you up to have kind of a positive mindset for the whole rest of the day. Once my tea was ready, I cozied up with A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. Guys, I've never read this book and I feel so lucky. <laughs> Anytime someone's told me that they've never read, I don't know, Peter Pan, Harry Potter, Little Women, Oliver Twist, the list goes on, but you get it, the really, really good children's classics, or I guess Harry Potter isn't quite a classic just yet, but whenever someone has not had that experience, I get very, very excited for them. And I feel very fortunate to have not yet experienced A Little Princess. It is entirely new to me, and the first four chapters have been utterly amazing. That's how far I got in my morning read, and I just am absolutely in love with Sarah. I feel so comforted already. This has been absolutely magical. And then I have quite a few things that I need to get done, but they're the sort that I can listen to an audiobook as I do them. So I was trying to decide on which book to listen to, and I have downloaded The Huga Holiday by Rosie Blake. As you guys know, if you've watched a few of my videos, I absolutely love Huga as a lifestyle. And Huga is a Danish word that I could be entirely mispronouncing, but it's basically a concept or a lifestyle in which you prioritize comfort and a sense of well being and slowness, just being fully present in the moment and prioritizing the things that bring you joy and warmth and meaning. The Huga Holiday, I'm pretty sure, is just like a cheesy rom-com type of read, but it seems like it will also be a special kind of story where there's that sense of Christmas community. It takes place in a really small town that's kind of failing financially, and the main character makes it her goal to help the town reestablish itself, and then there is some romance. Or at least this is what I've gathered from the little blurb. So I think it will be purely fun and wonderful, which makes it a great audiobook listen. And before I get started on the rest of my day, I did want to talk to you all about my favorite Christmas reads. So I have a hefty stack. When do I not have a hefty stack? Last year, I read The Guardians of Magic by Chris Riddell, and it's really good. There are so many fun illustrations in this book, and it's just like a magical new children's literature read. So if you're into children's literature and haven't given this a try, I do recommend it. I also have Little Women, which <laughs> is very predictable and not at all uncommon for this time of year. I usually read this book every single year and it is so cozy and comforting. And then of course I plan on watching the movies for a bit of Christmas spirit. I've already mentioned this one, but Peter Pan by J.M. Barry, one of my all time favorite novels. And it's not exactly a Christmas story. I'm not sure a little princess is either, but I think that Christmas spirit 
is very closely related to childhood magic, and Peter Pan and A Little Princess are chock full of childhood magic. Snow in Rose by Emily Winfield Martin is so good. It's also so beautifully illustrated. It is a retelling of the classic fairy tale, and it's just I don't want to overuse the word, but it is so cozy and comforting and makes you want to snuggle up with your mom and sister if you have one. And I've already mentioned this one, but A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. I love reading this on Christmas Eve. This one has a special place in my heart. And then lastly, I um, read The Christmas Bookshop by Jenny Colgan over the weekend. And this is so cheesy. It is like purely for fun. It is Hallmark movie level of cheesy, and I really enjoyed reading it. It follows three main plot points all surrounding the main character, Carmen. We have that of the bookshop that is failing and Carmen is trying to save in time for Christmas. And then we have a bit of romance, <laughs> Carmen's love life. And then we also have the fixing of family rifts. And I think that the family aspect is the most well-developed within this story. So if you enjoy cheesy Christmassy books that center around family feuds being mended and really happy, satisfying endings, I think that you'll enjoy this book. That being said, I had better get my day started and the very first thing on my to-do list is to design and order my Patreon sticker for the month of December and I think that it would be really great to listen to an audiobook while I do that. After I finish that, I'd like to get back to A Little Princess um, and do a little bit of gift wrapping. Landon and I have a date night tonight so I'd like to take you guys along for that and then we'll just see where the rest of the day takes us. So friends, if you have not already, go ahead and make yourselves a heartwarming cup of tea or coffee, grab your coziest of comfy blankets, and let's get to it. feeling very very energetic and playful and one of my favorite things to do with him when he gets like this is to play hide and seek so I can hide a toy anywhere in the house and he will go and find it and I thought it could be fun to show you guys so do you want to play hide and seek monsieur let's do it sit stay
Is it in there? Did you find it already? There it is. Good job, Ruth. Shall we have one last time? Monsieur Rue loves books as much as I do. There we go. Okay. <laughs> you got better about sliding. I know you can find it. So now that Rue has his energy out, I can talk to the camera without him jumping on me. That was so much fun. I always, I can't explain it. Every time we play hide and seek, I get so excited each time he finds the toy. There's something so satisfying about it. And then you can see that he is so excited because he found the toy. So I really enjoy that. Um, I finished my sticker and I got that ordered, which feels great. And I also got some other work done. Um, I wanted to show you guys first the sticker. I did a gingerbread house sticker for this month and I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's loosely based on my December cozy cottage calendar, which I'll also pop up. I'm just really into cozy cottages recently, I guess. Um, and then I also wanted to show you guys the December postcard. I am so, so happy with how this has turned out. It's the very first postcard that I've not done digitally. Normally I'll paint something traditionally and then make a digital version of it that's perfect because when using Procreate, I design most everything in Procreate on my iPad. Um, you can just make things perfect. You can undo all of your mistakes. You can experiment with color and just get it exactly how you like it. Whereas when you do something traditionally with paint and paper, if you make a mistake, you can't really undo it. Anyways, without further ado, this is my December postcard painting. It's of Rue and me in a cozy cottage on a cold winter's night sat beside a lively fire and a very comfy oversized armchair with a good book in hand and Christmassy decorations all about. It's also loosely based on our house as I'm sure some of you can tell with the arched window and the bookshelf and the arched fireplace. I wanted to capture the coziness of Christmas time during a dark, dark month. Moving on, I've listened through chapter four of the hookah holiday and I am sucked in. I can tell it's going to be so good and so far it's not very cheesy. Like it's just genuinely really good. Again, I'm only through chapter four so that could change. Yeah, I think I'm gonna continue with the hookah holiday because it's actually Landon's birthday on Saturday and I have a gift for him and I need to wrap it before he gets home. I've planned our date night tonight and oh man, it's gonna be a fun one. There's this place called The Grotto in Northeast Portland and they put on a light show every single year and there's Christmas caroling. And I'm pretty sure hot chocolate, we'll see. I've never been and I got his tickets to go there tonight. So, and it's a surprise for Landon and I'm hoping it's going to be really, really magical and have us feeling the Christmas spirit, so. Wrap his present, continue reading, make a quick, fun dinner, and then go see the lights. That sounds like a great rest of the day.
Okay, so before I wrapped it, I wanted to show you guys what I got Landon for his birthday. I got him two things. One is new tires for his mountain bike, which I've talked with him about because I needed those details, so he knows about that. And then the second thing, Landon is actually extremely difficult to get gifts for. He's very particular and is one of those people who will just buy what he needs. So I have no idea how this is going to go, but I really hope he likes it. I got him the Harry Potter Hogwarts Express Lego kit or Lego kit. Oh, it looks amazing. He absolutely loved Legos as a kid. His mom talks about it all the time and he really enjoys making or building things. Last year I got him an owl pellet and he loved it so much. Um, this is a big upgrade from an owl pellet, but I'm hoping that he is excited about it and we can put it together, together, <laughs> or I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I'll let you guys know. Maybe it'll be in my next video. So I'm really excited about this. And at least he has his mountain bike tires if he's not happy about this. We'll see. I think he's going to love it. also mention that Landon really likes Harry Potter. I don't think he's read all the books, but he's read a few of them and we've watched all the movies together. <laughs> we also went to Harry Potter World together like our second year of dating, so it's very special. <laughs> For dinner, we went with a tofu scramble and some avocado toast. Oh, I'm so excited. I think I know where we're going. <laughs> where do you think we're going? I think we're going to Christmas lights. We are. Peacock Lane? No. <laughs> I have no idea then. It's not Peacock Lane. <laughs>
have sweet dreams, friends. I love you. Good night.